Hello everyone, today we're looking at how to solve linear equations involving fractions. I'm going to show you a variety of different styles of questions, but generally follow one specific method for all the questions. Now before we start, I'm going to bring you to this expression over here, which is 3a minus 1 all divided by 5. And all I'm going to show you here is what happens when you multiply through by the denominator of a fraction. So if I multiply this fraction by five, now when you multiply by five, it's the same as times it by five over one. So when you multiply this by five, the five multiplies by three a giving us 15 a, and the five multiplies through by minus one giving us minus five. On the bottom, one times five is simply just Five. Now, once we've done this, we can actually simplify this expression by dividing top and bottom by 5. If we look at the left-hand side, 15a divided by 5 is simply 3a, and minus 5 divided by 5 is negative 1. And we can see we've actually got exactly what we started with over here without the denominator. So when you multiply through by a denominator, you can actually cancel out the five you're multiplying with, with the denominator underneath. And that's very important for what we're doing for today, because my method when it comes to solving linear equations with fractions is to multiply both sides by the denominator. And that's very, very key for what we're doing today. If I bring us here to two different questions over here, two very sort of simple star questions, we have over here a number divided by three equal to eight. Now, some people may already be able to say, oh, okay, what number divided by three gives us eight? Well, that's equal to 24. And the way we can do this, as we said, is to multiply both sides by the denominator. So if I times by three, and times by three. We already said that if I get three x over three is equal to 24, those threes are gonna cancel out, leaving us just with x is equal to 24. So here we multiply by the denominator and it was removed just leaving us with the numerator. So if we check that over here, x is 24. 24 divided by three does indeed give us eight. On the right hand side, we have a slightly different question. 50 divided by a number is equal to 10. Now, once again, some of you may be able to see immediately here that the denominator in this case will be equal to five. But when we come to more complicated questions, we need to follow a method which doesn't really give us any fractions. We can get rid of our fractions to make it easier for ourselves. So, as we said, the first step here, when you have a fraction, is to multiply both sides by the denominator. The denominator, in this case, is x times by x and times by x. Over here, we get 50x divided by x is equal to 10x. The x's cancel out and we're left just with the numerator, so 50 is equal to 10x. And now, because this is 10 times x, to get x on its own, we simply divide both sides by 10. And when we divide both sides by 10, we get x is equal to 50 over 10 is 5. 50 divided by 5 is indeed equal to 10. So here we've had it, just some simple questions when we've got fractions and within linear equations. So I'm gonna bring it to four other questions. I'm gonna show you two sets of two, just building each time in difficulty. So the next set of two questions are over here. We have over here 3a minus one divided by five is equal to four, and 10 over b plus one is equal to two. Now we actually already saw this right at the beginning of the video, 3a minus one divided by five. If we multiply through by the denominator times by five and times by five, we saw that the denominators canceled out 
and we were left just with the numerator. So we can say that two, sorry, three a minus one is equal to 20. So we cancelled out our denominator. Now we're going to solve this like a normal linear equation where we want to isolate the term with the unknown. I.e. you want to isolate the three a term. To isolate this, we need to get rid of this minus one. So we add one to both sides. We get 3a is equal to 21. And to get a on its own, we simply divide both sides by 3. 3a divided by 3 is a. 21 divided by 3 is 7. So we've got this value a equals 7. Let's check we are correct. 3a means 3 times a or 3 times 7 minus 1. So 3 times 7 is 21, minus 1 is 20, 20 divided by 5 is indeed equal to 4. So we can see that has worked out, that's correct. Door on the right, slightly different. Our numerator in this case is 10, and our denominator this time is not just b, and it's not just 1. It is a denominator of b plus 1. So we're going to multiply both sides by the denominator, which is b plus 1 and b plus 1. And when we multiply through by b plus 1, we said that when you multiply through by denominator, it cancels out. So on the left, I'm just left with 10. On the right, I'm left with two brackets, b plus 1. And for this, I need to expand the brackets before I can solve this. So when we expand our brackets, on the right hand side we get 2b plus 2 is equal to 10 and now once again we're just solving this like a normal linear equation so we want to get the unknown on its own so we need to subtract 2 and subtract 2 that gives us 2b is equal to 8 and then finally we divide both sides by 2 giving us b is equal to 4. If we now substitute that into the question, let's see if it works out. 4 plus 1 is 5, and 10 divided by 5 is also equal to 2. So again, we follow the same process here. We multiply both sides by the denominator. It cancelled out on the left-hand side, and then we expanded the brackets and solved normally. So we're now going to look at two examples where instead of having fractions only on one side of the equation, we're going to have fractions in two locations or on both sides. So turn this back over. We come to a question over here that looks like this. 6x minus 3 divided by 7 is equal to 13 minus x divided by 3. And for this, we are still going to apply the same principle that we've been looking at previously. We are still going to multiply both sides by the denominator, but we're actually going to multiply by both denominators one at a time. So if we look at the left-hand side, the denominator over here is 7. So I'm going to multiply both sides over here by 7, giving us, if we multiply this by 7, the denominator and numerator will cancel. So this is just going to be 6x minus 3 is equal to 7 times by 13 minus x divided by 3. We now have a denominator on the right hand side and not on the left hand side so we need to remove that denominator which we can do by multiplying both sides by 3 times by 3 and times by 3. This gives us 3 brackets 6x minus 3 is equal to 7 brackets 13 minus x. This is now a equation question with unknowns on both sides and it has brackets as well. So the first thing we're going to do is going to expand those brackets to make it easier for ourselves. 3 times 6x is 18x. 3 times negative 3 is minus 9. 7 times 13 is 91 and 7 times minus x is negative 7x. Now, whenever we solve equations with unknowns on both sides, we want to eliminate the smaller unknown, i.e. keep x positive. The smaller unknown over here between 18x and minus 7x is the negative 7x. So we're going to add 7x 
to both sides, plus 7x and plus 7x. 18x plus 7x is 25x. The minus 9 has nothing happened to it, is equal to 91. Now, once again, we're solving this as a general equation. So we're just going to add 9 to both sides, add 9 and add 9. That gives us 25x is equal to 100. And if we divide both sides by 25, we end up with x is equal to 4. And that's our solution. Again, let's check that that works. If we substitute that into the equation on the left-hand side, we have 6 times 4. 6 times 4 is 24. 24 take away 3 is 21. 21 divided by 7 is 3. If we apply it to the right-hand equation, 13 minus 4 is 9. 9 divided by 3 is also equal to 3. So once again, that has also worked out. We're going to look at one final example now, again involving fractions in two, in two uh, locations, which we will see just now. So just turning this over over here, we come to our last question, which is over here. Now, once again, we've got two fractions, but we've also got these two integers over here. But we're going to keep this simple by once again following the same process we've done previously. The aim is here to remove the fractions, to eliminate those by multiplying through by the denominators. So the first thing we're going to do is we're going to multiply both sides by 4. However, when you multiply both sides by 4, you have to times everything on that side and on that side by 4. So here, when I multiply this by 4, these 4s are going to cancel out, I get 5x. I now have to multiply the minus 2 by 4, so I get minus 8. When I multiply this by 4, I get 4x over 3. And when I multiply this by 4, I get plus 36. So that has got rid of the denominator of 4 from the left-hand side. I now also need to eliminate the denominator of this fraction, the 3. So I'm going to multiply both sides by 3 now. So times by 3 and times by 3. That gives us 15x minus 24 is equal to these 3x's. Three these 3's are going to cancel out. So 4x plus 36 times 3 is 108. Once again, we now have an equation with unknowns on both sides, and we need to eliminate out the smaller unknown. The smaller unknown between 15x and 4x is simply the 4x. So we subtract 4x from both sides. We're left with 11x minus 24 is equal to 108. From this point here, we can now add 24 to both sides to ensure that we end up with this over here. If we multiply, if we add the 24 over here and add 24 over here, we get 11x is equal to 108 plus 24 is equal to 132. And then finally, if we divide through by 11 and divide through by 11, x is equal to 12. And that is the full process. Again, we can check our answer. 5 times 12 is 60. 60 divided by 4 is 15. 15 minus 2 is 13. So that was 13. 12 divided by 3 is 4. 4 plus 9 is 13. We've checked it. It's worked on both sides. But we followed the same process for all these questions. You've always got to multiply both sides by the denominator to remove the fraction. And once you've got rid of all the fractions, you can then solve the linear equations normally, either via eliminating the smaller unknown or isolating the term with the unknown. And I hope this has made sense. If it hasn't, please let me know or comment below.